Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another episode of Antonio's Movie Reviews. Today I have the 1982 movie Cat People, an erotic horror film starring Nastasha Kinski, Malcolm McDowell, Annette O'Toole, and John Hurd. The film was directed by Paul Schrader. Personally, I enjoyed the horror aspect of the film, but I wouldn't go as far as to categorize it as such. As I read about the film, there were definitely a lot of critics in agreement with me there. It certainly contains a lot more skin than gore. I appreciated the horror aspect of the film also because without that, the storyline definitely would not have worked in my opinion. The blend of eroticism and gore might not be as attractive with some viewers, but nevertheless they go hand in hand I'd say. The film has a really captivating style that for me was very interesting. The prologue really set me up for a cheesy full moon transformation kind of movie, but that is truly not the case when it comes to cat people. In fact, the way upon which the transformation even occurs is one of my favorite parts about the movie. I just thought it was such a clever idea, it's definitely because of that aspect of the film that Cat People is in the category that it's in instead of something like fantasy or simply horror itself. This particular film is a remake with the original Cat People coming out in 1942 and being written by DeWitt Bodine. The original film was preserved in the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. It's sort of startling seeing a young Malcolm McDowell here. Yeah, right. Were you picking up last time? I'm Paul. I'm Irina. Yes, I know. Welcome home. Here at last. I'm so glad. <laughs> Get your eyes anywhere. Oh, Paul, she's a lovely, lovely little thing. Your brother's. In regard to this version of the movie, I thought Nastasha Kinski performed very well as our lead for what she had to work with, anyway. What I mean by that is that the plot to this movie truly is silly in a sense. It's the actors taking the movie serious that, in turn, led to me as a viewer taking the movie serious, in my opinion. The film definitely has all the elements of being a horror movie. It's shot awfully dark and gives a very early depiction of New Orleans from what I can tell. Although I understand the aspect of incest in relation to the plot of this movie, that was definitely one of my least favorite things about it. I believe it may have had something to do with how stunning Kinski was as Irina, but I was just disgusted by the idea of Malcolm McDowell's character in a way. He had such an eerie vibe to him. Cat People is one of those movies that I remember seeing as a child in video stores because it had such an intriguing cover. You know the one that had Kinski's face shape-shifting into a cat? Personally, I've never been too into werewolf type films, but I thought with Halloween approaching, this would definitely be fitting for a review. I thought the large black panthers of this film to be much more realistic than werewolves would be within this plot. You find out pretty early on that Paul isn't exactly who he claims to be once he disappears from the house during the same time as an attack at a local motel. John Heard. Heard the shit out of John, it was your last night. Guy split stark naked in this neighborhood, who'd notice? How to get in there? All right, let's go with the uh, ketamine straight. He knows you're there. I hear him, he doesn't sound overjoyed. Around this time, Irina finds herself drawn to the zoo in what pretty much gives her a sense of belonging and identity in my opinion. Some people may disagree, but I thought the film got better as it progressed. The film just gives so much mythology along with David Bowie that it sort of bored me early on. Paul Schrader had also directed American Gigolo two years prior to this film and something written by someone else was definitely a departure from his usual work. Schrader told LA Times in 1982 that he worked on Cat People because after completing American Gigolo he found himself with nothing to say. You wanna go to a suit? Why don't you go to LeBron? Why don't you let me take you French corners? I've s <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Trader went on to add in the same article that cat people was the tonic he needed to revitalize. Although Schrader did go on to write three more movies immediately after working on cat people in only a director capacity, the films he wrote for the remainder of the decade don't appear to draw inspiration from films like Cat People and American Gigolo in my opinion that is. How'd you get up there? What the hell were you doing back there? Sketching. Sketching? That animal's not even supposed to... What's wrong? It's aspirin. No, thank you. I'm exhausted, that's all. Schrader's next film, Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters, was critically acclaimed though, so maybe cat people did give Schrader a sense of awakening of, in his own right, like Kinski appears to be having in this film with John Hurd's character, Oliver. Variety stated in a 1981 issue that John Hurt was originally attached to the film. Personally, I believe that to be a hilarious typo because they have such similar names. Although I do like John Hurt as an actor, I believe he would have turned down something like this. Even John Hurd appears to be meandering along. John Hurd was also in the movie Blown Away that we reviewed on this channel. I honestly really enjoy a lot of John Hurd's movies. Like I said, the pay ain't great. No, I, I really like it. Oh, we gotta go. Hurry up, we can get that thing. Oh, come on. Oh. Bond. What you got? Ooh, Empire Strikes Back gum. Oh. You're not from New Orleans. No. Strange, isn't it? Cat People is really a simple film in a way, especially considering the much more elaborate movies of the 80s we've reviewed. I personally feel like the movie could have had much more mystery to it than horror. Some of the gore just really threw me off at points. I know it's considered a remake, but from what I can tell, this is a long shot from the original. Hey, hey, move, move. <laughs> From what I've read, the original film didn't have as much violence and much more of an intricate plot. But this 1982 version, I was left asking a lot of questions about the film. For example, assuming Irina was the girl in the cave in the prologue, we just fast forward to her as a young adult meeting with her brother later. We're told she is raised in orphanages and foster homes, but they leave us nothing as to how they got there, and I didn't like that hole in the storyline. Oh, don't you touch me! But I'm the only one who can touch you. Waited a long time for you. I need you. Who are you? In short, the film can almost be seen as sort of a romance film in a way when you think of the love triangle that is displayed between Irina and her brother Paul, with also Oliver. Good. Oh, yeah. Shut up, idiot. What? Don't know anything about the basement either, hmm? Basement. Oh, I don't. You're with a zoo, right? Yeah. Come with me, I want to show you something. Guillet's been in and out of cycle war since he was 12. He's a John Hurd's character, Oliver, almost appears to be sort of some innocent bystander in all of this. Of course, for this movie to resemble any sort of romance film, the shockingly violent scenes would have to be removed, which I once again want to reiterate were not present in the original 1942 film. The writer Alan Ormsby also did Porky's 2. Nick, hey, Yateman, this is Irina. Irina, this is Yateman Brewer. Oh, well, she's mighty pretty here. This one is going to go off. Look at this. I can't. Beautiful hair. <laughs> Thank you. I thought Annette O'Toole was just as stunning in this film as Kinski, to be honest. She was lucky to be cast in a supporting role, I'd say, considering her later career in comparison to Kinski's. Although, to be fair, Nastasha Kinski had a fulfilling career in Hollywood by her own right, I'd say. As someone who grew up with panther portraits around the house, it was no surprise to me that my parents were both fans of this movie. Right off the bat, my mom remembered, and she has never really seen any of the movies I reviewed, so I knew I had to see this one. The nudity and violence of this film definitely took the place of story development in my opinion. 
It's like, if they were going to do a remake, then it should have been done with the best parts of the original in mind. I know Schrader had to be working as hard as he could to save face in the midst of American Gigolo when this was released. The film has since gained its well-deserved cult status and has a healthy 60% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Personally, I have to say, for what the movie is, it's at least well made. There was a subtle intrigue about it. I don't know what to go. It doesn't matter where you go. How far will that take me? Richmond. Richmond. The movie certainly had some nonsensical parts about it, but it did have good elements of horror as well as eroticism, so I honestly think it qualifies as a B-movie in my opinion. We can only make love with our own. Otherwise, we transform. Mother. You must return. The movie indeed had cheesy parts to it at times, but I was quickly able to overlook those when I realized it was made in 1982. Also, for it to be a remake, the plot itself is at least original, if nothing else. I honestly think this movie would do well being remade today. If it were to cut back on the violence and nudity, I believe this could be one of those remakes that could appeal to a younger audience. This film and also the original would get renewed attention. Thinking back to the actual viewing of this film, it's hard to believe that it was actually two hours long. I imagine if the film had been condensed a bit, it would have been a lot less boring for lack of a better word. The thing about all of this history that we learned of the cat people, it never really goes anywhere. The plot is aimed towards eroticism so steadfastly that much of the history has nothing really to do with what's going on in the film. Thinking too much about the story just forces you to ask more questions, leading for you to disparage the film ultimately. I think it's best to be taken simply and not thought too much into. I mean, it by no means is a bad film at all in my opinion. To take the plot itself at face value, it would be quite difficult to be the person to make it a quality movie in any genre. Yes, Annette O'Toole and Nastasha Kinski might be clickbait, but beyond that I honestly believe Schrader did well, especially considering this isn't really his niche when you think about it. Why? You could have killed me. No. Then free me. Overall, this movie is good for a watch, I would say. Around this time of year especially if you're into the entire werecat sort of idea. It was a very unique movie and it stuck with me after I'd watched it. It could be so much better than it is in my opinion, and the entire part at the end of just David Bowie's song playing while forcing you to stare at a panther was just such a waste of a viewer's time. I definitely enjoyed the acting in this movie however. For as highly regarded in list of erotic thrillers as this movie seems to be, I just assumed it would be better. The opening scene didn't draw me in, and some of the violence was just cringe along with the idea of incest. Thankfully that part didn't actually happen. I'd like to thank you all for joining me for my review on the 1982 movie Cat People starring Nastasha Kinski, Malcolm McDowell, John Hurt, and Annette O'Toole. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks.